You know, you hear a lot of times the words great American novel bandied about. In my video on The Scarlet Letter, I explained what, if you didn't know, what the great American novel, what the definition of a great American novel is. And the book you're seeing on your screen right now, which is Ceremony by Leslie Marmon Silco, is, I believe, not just a great American novel, but a, the, the, not, an, not just an example of the great American novel, but also an example of the great Native American novel. Um, this book uh, brings to, um, brings to uh, the reader's attention uh, the plight of, of a people who we often don't get to see in literature, uh, and that is, of course, the Native Americans. The or the, the or the people who lived here first. Um, so often, when you come across, when you when you encounter Native Americans in literature, it's often in um, Western novels, uh, such as the works of like Louis L'Amour or something like that. Um, and that that and it's so often written from the viewpoint of a of, of a of, of a pale of a pale face. Um, this is a book that I had wanted to read for some time because this is written by a uh, Native American woman, Leslie Marmon Silco. I believe belongs to the uh, Pueblo people of New Mexico. Uh, this book is a great, great, great example of, a, or is a great way to really get a glimpse of Native American values and culture uh, from an authentic source, not written from a white viewpoint, try, not, not, not written from an outsider looking in. Um, there, it's more than just, it's more than the stereotypical crap you usually get with Native Americans in fiction. Um, this is a book, um, it, it's set in modern time, or well, not really modern now. It, it's set uh, right after World War II, and it follows the struggles of a young man named Teo to kind of to kind of to kind of find his place in the world after being um, traumatized by um, his experiences in the war. Uh, and through his story, we get to see so many ways in which um, Native American culture um, struggles to maintain relevancy in the modern America, which is dominated by uh, white um, European culture, Anglo culture. Uh, Teo is a young man who had who. Served, who served in World War II alongside his, I think it is his cousin. It's his cousin Rocky, and uh, we don't really know a lot at the uh, onset of this book about what happened in in the war, but we do as the story goes on. But as the book opens, Teo is not in a good way. He he has no. He's very sick. Not in a, well, kind of in a physical sense, but he's sick in his soul because he, he, he served in a war uh, which was, which he feels did not, he served in, in a white man's war and then now afterwards he has, he feels as though he has been discarded uh, because the respect that he enjoyed while he maintained the status of a soldier in the war has now been stripped, and now he is very much viewed as the the stereotypical uh, drunk Indian on the reservation that white people um, look down their noses at. And so Tato has no real motivation. He kind of he's very sick. He kind of just lays in bed all day. And when he gets out, he's just to, 
go drink with his buddies. Uh, and this book really touches on, you know, there's a, there's a stereotype kind of around Native Americans of, that, uh, re, re, regarding a, uh, a propensity for alcoholism. And this book really grapples with that because uh, Tao and his uh, buddies who are also veterans uh, drink to excess, uh, but not because they're just in, not, obviously not just because they're inherently uh, can't hold their liquor, uh, but because their lives now kind of suck because they have, their their status in society is bottom, bottom rung, the bottom rung of the ladder in society, uh, whereas obviously prior to the colonization of North America, the, the Native Americans were, I mean, they were the only Americans, their, their, their status in, in their, in their own land has been degraded down to nothing, to where they live on, um, they live in, um, they live where the white, where the white man says they can live, um, and they live in squalor, and it's, they're drinking to, um, assuage their uh, consciences that cry out against this inhum this this inhumane degradation which they are subjected to. Uh, te while Teo and his buddies were uh, soldiers in the war, they were not viewed as they are when they returned and prior to leaving. Uh, while they were while they wore the uniform, they were viewed with they were treated with great respect and uh, they were they were treated with great affinity even by white people. But after they returned from the war and they resumed their lives on the reservation, all that is taken away and they are viewed once again as just the, the dirty drunk Indians, the, the dirty shiftless Indians. Um, and so they drink because they and because they kind of want they drink to forget, but at the same time they want to remember those glory days or what they think were the glory days. And so Teo doesn't know what to do. He's very sick. He has PTSD pretty bad uh, due to what uh, happened with his cousin in the war. They were on the, I think they were on the uh, Batan uh, death march. And um, yeah, Rocky didn't make it. His cousin, his, his cousin Rocky did not make it, and he feels great guilt because Rocky was the one who was supposed to get out. It's kind of like a story. It's kind of instead of a ghetto, instead of trying to escape the ghetto, they're trying to escape the reservation. And Rocky was the one who was uh, most uh, apt to get out because he had, he was very athletic. He was a great athlete, and he was also a very good student, and so he stood a real chance of, of going somewhere in the world. Teo really didn't, but it's Teo who survives the war where Rocky dies, and Teo feels great guilt because he he had to live with Rocky and Rocky's uh, parents after his mother. I can't remember if she died. I think it, I can't remember if she died or if she abandoned him. Either one. His mother wasn't in the picture, so he had to live with them, and so he was he, he felt it was up to him to take care of Rocky uh, in the war because uh, he, he, he felt he owed it to it. And uh, he, Rocky was killed, and he feels like he's responsible for that death. So Teo has a lot of problems. And uh, much like, and then by the way, much like uh, Miss Selko herself, Teo is, belongs to the Pueblo people in New Mexico. Uh, he lives on the reservation in New Mexico where he uh, is trying to manage the ranch which his uh, uncle uh, owns there. But it's very hard to do because the, they have no real money for proper facilities and the cattle they get, it's just kind of a, a free range kind of grazing plan. And so there, and then there's a great drought. Uh, there, there's a, uh, of course, I think New Mexico is already uh, pretty arid. But there's a drought going on, and they're and they're finding it very difficult to maintain this ranch um, on the reservation. And so the book is composed of, or comprised of several different plot threads. Um, some of them, only one of them, 
Uh, it's comprised of two main plot threads with some minor subplots thrown in uh, in the background. The main plot is this is Teo's story and his road to recovery uh, by the embracing of his traditional values and culture and his turning away from the, the white man's world. And the second plot thread deals with, it's very mythical. It deals with the, 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 the myths of the, of the Pueblo people um, regarding, um, I, I can't, I won't do that justice if I try to explain it to you, um, but it, it all ties together at the end. Um, and it's written, part of it is written, the parts dealing with the mythical plot thread are written in a free verse poetry uh, style, whereas the rest of it is just written in typical prose. Uh, and this book is very well written. It's um, it's very well written. Uh, uh, Leslie Marvin Silco is a great writer. Uh, however, the, she did, there is several times in this book where I, she used like the same word uh, like multiple times within one sentence where it wouldn't have, where it would have been better had she had a synonym or just chosen not to word the sentence that particular way. Uh, there was a couple of times where I was like, what were you thinking? And when with the, with the phrasing of these sentences, because she used the same word like four or five times within one sentence almost. And, but but oh, on, by and large, this book is very well written. She is a very good writer, and the characters are all, um, they're all human. Uh, Teo, obviously, is the primary character. He's the one that's the most fleshed out, but we understand the plight of all the characters in the work. We understand that they struggle with this sense of self-loathing uh, that has been impressed upon them by the uh, the white society at large because they they just they they're drinking because they know that their lives are they've been degraded down to nothing and their culture has been squashed by white culture and so they just drink and drink and their lives just get worse and worse and they, the more they the worse their lives get the more they hate themselves and they they hate their station in life and so it's just this vicious cycle but uh Teo eventually uh, is recommended that the, the reason this book is called Ceremony is because Teo eventually is uh, referred to a medicine man. And the medicine man gives him uh, several tasks like ceremonies to complete in order to go about his healing. And the book just details um, I, you'll have to you'll have to forgive me if I'm not giving a pretty a really clear overview of this book because the plot there's not really that much plot in terms of um, one thing leads to another. It's just him trying on the road to re, uh, recovery, trying to regain his mental health as well as um, it or through rather through the embracing of his traditional uh, cultural values and turning away from the white world uh, at large. Uh, the, uh, the book is just a really, it's a very good book, y'all. It's the, the edition I have here is the Penguin uh, Classics edition. I think that may be the only edition of this book you can buy at this time, or at least it was the only one I saw when I tried to buy this on Amazon. Um, so, uh, but this book is just a really great book that allows us to see the the plight of the Native Americans, or at least one tribe of Native Americans, uh, from a real authentic viewpoint and not an outsider attempting to emulate. Um, Teo's story is really uh, kind of telling in the, in the emotions that he feels towards himself and his own people and the way that he kind of views it's 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 really involved with kind of self-loathing and it's really sad because they they just they they view themselves as so their and their own culture is so they view themselves and their own culture so lowly because of the the station that they've been put in and that's the station they've been reduced to. So as Tao learns to um, go about completing the ceremony by um, by giving himself over to his own traditional culture, 
his mind gradually heals and it ends and eventually he is more or less recovered or he is on a better path. And the book culminates with, um, well, I'm not going to tell you exactly how, how it comes out, but it culminates, it ends with a sunrise. Because uh, sun, the sunrise is there's is very symbolic throughout this book of renewal and rebirth. And the book ends literally with on the last page uh, just the one word. Because again, a lot of this is written in free verse uh, poetry style. Uh, on the last page, it just says sunrise, and so you get the impression that he that this rebirth, this process of rebirth, has been begun, and he is on his way to mending. Uh, by you know, by embracing more wholeheartedly his own uh, heritage, and so uh, I just this I just wanted to really highlight this book because I have not seen any reviews of this book on YouTube. I might be I might be the first or one of the first. This is not a book that you see reviewed um, a lot on YouTube. I mean, obviously there's reviews of it on Goodreads, but on YouTube this it's not talked about a lot. And so I kind of just wanted to shine a, a light on this book because it is an example of what I consider to be not just a great American novel, but a great, or not just the great American novel, but an example of the great Native American novel, the original <laughs> American novel. Those who were here uh, prior to we, to us of European descent. And um, so, yeah, I, I, if you have not heard this book, um, it's not very, it's not, it's not really obscure, but it's not, you're not going to see it on the bestseller list. It was written in the 70s, so it's pretty old. Um, but yeah, if you haven't heard of this book, uh, it's not that surprising. It's not the most uh, popular thing out there, but uh, I would recommend that you check this out if you're interested in Native American beliefs or Native American culture or just seeing the plight of the different people, uh, I would really recommend that you check this book <coughs> check this book out. Leslie Martin Silco is a great writer. This book is written very well with the exception of a couple places where it kind of, it was kind of questionable. Uh, on, by and large, this book is very well written. And so um, and it really is just a fantastic it really is just a fantastic little window into uh, the lives of um, a minority that doesn't get much um, representation except through cliche stereotypes that are woefully outdated. So yeah, have you heard of Ceremony? Have you read Ceremony? Um, if you haven't, I would encourage you to do so. I think you can get a lot out of it. Um, uh, but if uh, you have, I would love to hear your take on it down in the comments and if you have agreed with anything that I've said here today. And as always, remember to like and subscribe, and until next time, goodbye.